Hey everyone, welcome back to another Patty's Lab video. So if you are the person that needs custom springs for that 3D printing project, then you're watching the right video. In this video, we're going to make plastic springs made out of 3D printing filaments. And this idea originated from the coil-like structures that are being formed when you prime the nozzle. So let's get started. In this video, I will be testing three types of materials. In red, we can see PETG. In white, we can see nylon. And last but not least, in blue, we see PLA. All materials have been exposed to moisture, and this is crucial since filaments that have been dried are more brittle and will therefore break faster. Winding springs can actually be quite tricky. Hence, I made a little ring that will help you in the process. So what you do is you shove this ring around an axle, and this is 6 millimeters, and I will include multiple rings in the link in the description. However, a 5 to 8 millimeter axle is recommended. This tiny hole that you see right here needs to be tapped with an M3 tap. And after tapping, you need to insert a small snipped off bit of 1.75 millimeter filament and preferably a very soft filament. This is PETG. And this allows for a small barrier between your set screw and your axle. And therefore you don't damage the exterior surface of the axle and you can just reuse it over and over again. So this is a small trick that I highly advise you to do. It's not super tight, but this is enough for this application. I've taken the ring off to show you the red bit of plastic in the hole of the set screw. Also, you can see on the side there are two holes printed into the ring for 3 and 1.75 millimeter filament. So if you actually want a stronger spring, you can use 3 millimeter filament instead of 1.75. That's also why this concept is really cool. I've connected my trusty Makita cordless drill to the axle and would highly advise you to use a cordless drill in the winding process. Furthermore, I've put the drill in its first gear and therefore you gain more control over the winding process. We're going to make two types of springs, push and pull. But first, I'll show you how to make the push springs. For the push springs, you need to add four markings. The first two are for the roll-in and the second two are for the roll-out. In between markings 2 and 3, you create the actual helix that will make up your spring. But hopefully all of this will make more sense when we're actually going to wind the springs. The step we're going to do right now can be a hit or miss for PLA. For me, it was not too brittle, but if your PLA breaks, then you can use a hairdryer or warm water to soften the plastic and prevent it from breaking. The winding process starts with winding the plastic up to the first mark and making sure that the windings are getting so close that they end up touching each other. And you will continue this up to the second mark. From this point, the helix angle can be determined. In essence, how many windings will fit in a certain length. The more windings, the weaker the spring. The winding of the helix can actually be quite tricky, but with some practice, you will manage. Then from the third mark, you need to bring the spacing between the windings back to zero and continue this up to the fourth mark. For a pull spring, you just add two instead of four marks on the axle, and then you keep on rolling with all the windings touching each other. This is basically how you make the pull spring. When you are done rolling the spring, you need to fix the ends in place. And you do this by adding two zip ties. At this point, you can still tweak the spring a little bit and make sure that all the windings have equal spacing and the spring is tightly wound around the axle. If the zip ties are really tight and you're happy with the result, then you can snip off the loose ends. When you cut off the excess material, you need to make sure that you have at least 4 to 6 mm of filament sticking out from your zip tie, and this will be your indicator in the oven to monitor the melting process. I think you want to keep the rings. So it's smart to remove them before we place the spring into the oven. 
There is one final step before we can place the spring into the oven and that is wrapping it in Kapton tape. When you start wrapping, make sure that you wrap in the correct orientation so that you don't loosen or unwind the spring when you apply the tape. And why do we need this tape? This tape is basically to hold the newly wounded shape of the spring when all the stresses that we applied by winding it in the material will start to release in the oven. A little tip is when you cut the tape and don't cut it short but cut it rather long and fold it in on itself and this way you will basically create a small pull tab for yourself so when you take it out of the oven then it's really easy to unwind the tape. The spring is now ready to put into the oven but before we're actually gonna melt it I will freeze the video and talk a bit about the temperatures and the melt times. For PLA you want to set the oven at around 120 degrees celsius, for PETG at around 160 and for nylon at about 200 degrees celsius. So in this case you really want to soften the plastic rather than dry the filament so more heat is actually better. Since you're monitoring the melting process by yourself by looking at the filament stick out, these higher temperatures should not be an issue. And you might have noticed that I placed the axle on two knives, raising it off the rack, and you don't want any parts of the spring touching the metal surface of the oven. I've also got an awesome new thermal camera, and I can show you what the temperature distribution in the oven looks like. And I will try to implement more thermal shots in, in my future videos, because its information is super useful in the 3D printing scene. One final remark, it's important that you let your temperature in the oven reach the set temperature before you actually put the spring in. As you can see here the indicator is softening and slowly drooping down. So whenever the filament has reached a state of where it's not sagging anymore, you will wait like 30 seconds longer and then you take it out of the oven and then you rinse the spring with cold water locking its shape into place. After you have removed the tape and the zip ties, you can start by trimming the excess material and basically cutting the spring into its final shape. So for the pull springs, you apply the same trimming technique, but then also you need to fold open the ends to create eyes that can mount to posts in your 3D prints. And it doesn't matter if you take three sections at a time, because you can always trim those later but you saw i opened them cold but it might be smart to actually heat up the spring before you fold open those eye sections because folding them cold will create stresses and especially for pla will probably break and i will also show you later why this can be important you've probably asked yourself the question a thousand times now and that is regarding how strong are the springs and especially how durable are they well Regarding the strength of the springs really depends on the diameter and the pitch angle, but I can assure you they will work perfectly fine in your 3D printed designs like latches or push buttons. But also I can answer the question regarding how durable they are. I built this machine that will basically extend or compress the spring to a certain value and then go back to its natural resting position and then the machine can be set to start and it will repeat that movement over and over again for thousands of times. So at around 500 cycles the PLA pool spring broke, but I have to admit it was 10 degrees celsius in there and also the springs were extended over 200% their original length. After about 5400 cycles, the PETG pool spring broke as well. Unfortunately, the pool spring test did not reach the 10,000 cycles and this is because of an interference problem that stopped the test prematurely. But regardless of this, the amount of cycles that have been completed will correspond to 20 cycles a day approximately for two years of usage. So now let's have a look at the springs after all those cycles. But these are my three push springs from the experiment but they actually made 
18,000 cycles instead of 10 because of my failed first attempt. I just restarted the test. This is the nylon one and it looks and feels absolutely fine. This is also the lightest spring. Then we have the PETG one, which also feels absolutely fine. And it springs out of your hand. It springs nicely back into place. This is the PLA spring and it also withstood 18,000 cycles. And this is the heavier spring. You can really feel the difference, but I'm worried that when the temperature gets too hot, that this will actually melt and then permanently deform. But still, if you need a tougher spring, you could use this PLA spring. These are the pool springs from the experiment. And this is the absolute champ, the nylon, which still works absolutely fine. The tabs are still in one place, not broken off, but it's also the lightest spring. Then this is the PETG spring. And as you can see, there is a stress point, which is being created whenever you fold this open. And there is exactly where the filament snapped because the spring itself will just work absolutely fine. For the PLA one, it's the same story. It also fractured at the stress point right there. And Still, the spring itself works absolutely fine and you can really feel the difference in stiffness. But again, when the temperature gets too hot, this will probably melt and deform. So this was my plastic spring adventure and I wasted a lot of material in order to achieve this and investigate this. So if you could smash that like button and subscribe to my channel, that would be absolutely awesome. I hope you learned something and I hope you can apply this to your own designs. Thank you all for watching. And remember, just try to DIY.